that's what I woke up to today. <laughs> um, yeah. And this is only day one. I'm supposed to be here for three days. Uh, worst part of it is it's windy, so it's not going to be all that great inside the garage here. But I don't have a choice. I have to do that motor today. Uh, I forgot to get something when I went out yesterday. So I had to go back out. And I decided to go for a little bit of a drive. And... Air code 7. Yeah, I tried and I tried and I tried. It just, it wouldn't clear up. Uh, whether the steering was straight or turned, it didn't make any difference. I finally got it going. But... The motor was weak. And it's just not sounding right, so... I can't put it off any longer, especially with this stuff outside here. <laughs> and apparently inside. <laughs> That's the problem with a door that doesn't seal. He'll be coming in the back door too. <clears throat> so I'm going to need all the power that I can get out of the motor and it's just... It's not right. So commutator has to be done today. And of course, it's cold. <laughs> like I figured that's the problem with procrastinating you know you put it off and put it off and then by the time you have to do it conditions are worse so that's my job for today I gotta get that done and then I gotta take the front off again and see what's going on there's obviously something else there um so like, like I've mentioned before uh error code 7 is supposed to be a throttle error, that's what the manual says, but it seems to be a default. Um, I'm not sure what error code 9 is, but that's what I get when the manual lever is in the, the push mode and not in drive mode. That one's consistent. Error code 2 is supposed to be bad connection to the motor. But, <laughs> when I was getting error code 2, it was because it was a bad connection to the brake. Error code 7 is supposed to be a throttle error, but that's the error that comes up when that plug is melted, the charger plug. And is also the error that comes up when something up here is sharting. So nothing is as it seems with the, mon the monster's error codes. So, error code 7 seems to be a generic one. It just tells you something's wrong. You gotta figure it out on your own. So I got it before, and I'm saying this for new subscribers that haven't seen earlier videos. I spent eight months trying to figure out what was wrong with the motor, or right, motor, the monster. Uh, last year, year before, I don't even remember now. Uh, when I was driving down on the floodplain before they started doing the construction down there every once in a while on the way back out it would just go into error mode for whatever reason and didn't start doing it more often and then it would <laughs> July 1st down at the park watching the fireworks and I could not move the monster because it would stay in error mode um, I could turn it on, I don't have my keys in, I could turn it on, I could use the throttle, everything was fine, but it was dark at that point, so I needed my lights. As soon as I turned my lights on, it would go into error, and so it just got to the point where I couldn't use my lights. So error, error code 7 was the one that was coming up, which is a throttle error, which made no sense because as long as I didn't have my lights on, I could drive fine. So it wasn't a throttle. And that's sort of kind of almost what it's doing now. But, like I say, I spent eight months trying to diagnose it. I replaced the display panel. I, d I replaced the controller. That's where I got the new controller from. And I replaced the throttle. Nothing fixed the problem. 
So that's when I discovered the plug was melted. And I replaced the plug and problem was solved. So even though it says throttle error, it's not a throttle error. <laughs> so then I started having another issue, error code 7 again. Whenever I turned to the right, and that's when I discovered there was a wire up front. Uh, electrical tape had unpeeled itself from it, and it was shorting on the frame. So that's why I know when that happens, especially if the lights are on, to look up there, something's going on. And well, I did that again, and it turned out the plug for or the connector for my new bumper light had, had separated and the bare tab was hitting the frame. Fix that! And everything was good. More or less. So instead of having the air come on when I turn left, it was coming on when I turn right. So I took it all apart, got rid of all my connectors, soldered everything directly, and put heat shrink tubing on so nothing's going to short. And it was good for about a day. <laughs> and now it's doing it again. So I gotta take it apart. Maybe I missed something. I don't know. Maybe a wire broke from tension. Because some of them were pretty short. Uh, they had, they had, that bumper light wire was kind of short. There was a lot of tension on it. Which is why it pulled the connector apart. So I put extra wire on it. So there's no stress on it. I did that with a couple of them. So I'll, I don't know what's going on. I'll have to figure that out. But it's just that's just the way the monster is. Um... It's, it just gives you error codes, there's 10 error codes, and there's like a million things that could go wrong with this thing, so, you know, like I say, error code 7 seems to be generic. Yeah, so, yeah. that's just kind of how things are going right now with this thing, but I just, I just gotta get it fixed, it's just driving me nuts, so I can get everything going and actually enjoy driving it again especially now in the winter because working on this thing in the cold is really really not all that enjoyable okay so you see this black cloud here <laughs> I want to get rid of that today get it done get it over with so what I got to do now this is the main thing because I cannot drive. I can, I can drive with the error happening. It's an annoyance, but I can at least drive it. But without this motor working properly, you know, it's not going anywhere. I'm not taking it out. So that is my goal. So I can take fender off, and I'm going to mark the motor. So I put it back together exactly how it came apart. So I don't reverse the polarity again. <laughs> I gotta make sure of that and go from there I got a <laughs> I have to machine the commutator because of the <laughs> the brushes have got quite a groove in it and I did clean it up as best I could but I didn't get rid of the groove I just cleaned everything so I think that's what's causing the problem now. I think the the brushes are arcing, and because when I start moving, that the scanner picks up interference from it and gets all staticky. So something is not right electrically, and I just I don't know, I just the smell coming from it, it something's not right in there. I'm sure it's the brushes arcing. So I got to take care of that. Because the longer it goes, the worse it's going to get. <laughs> so, hopefully my gasket worked and there's no oil in it. But. Oh. It's not going to be a good day. So hopefully, I'm not frustrated today like I was yesterday. I solved my problems. I may talk about them later. But, uh, everything's good today, except for the weather. <laughs> but, before I tackle this, I need to remind everybody. I am not, 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 I am not a licensed mobility scooter technician.
I do what I do to keep my machine working. If you're having problems with your machine, I suggest going to your dealer. If you add accessories, warranty goes bye-bye. So I just kind of want to enjoy what I can while I can. So I strongly suggest you don't do the things that I do. I make the mistakes so you don't have to. <laughs> so, I don't think this is common practice. <laughs> because this this will be the first time me doing anything like this. So I gotta see what I can find. I'm gonna turn my light on, my bright light, work light. And that thing gets pretty hot, so it might actually Keep the garage up a little bit. So, let's get things started. That's never happened before. <sighs> oh. Well, so far it looks like there's no oil in it. I'm going to give a bit of a close-up here. Um, so, This is where the motor shaft goes in. There is a rubber seal on there. However, <laughs> I can't even tell. I don't know if it is outside the inner raceway of the bearing or inside. I can't tell. But the seal is there. I didn't know that. Somebody said there should be. There is a rubber seal there. But it's, it's steel. 
Okay, I thought there was steel, steel on the inside, but no, it's rubber. So I've never actually known that. So that's kind of cool. Um. I don't know what these bolts are for. I thought that was part of the casting. I guess that's a separate piece. So, anyways, um, the seal is there. It's still soft. It doesn't stick up or anything, so maybe that's an issue. I don't know. But, I'm really not worried about it. Um, especially this time of year, everything's cold. The grease is going to be... Um, pretty, <laughs> I don't even know how to say it, non-liquid, um, just simply because of the cold, but, uh, I do have to get this done, so. still have my brake alignment marks. Put it back on where it needs to be. And remember, with the brake mark sticking up, that's the position. That's the position of the label, upside down, down near the bottom. I'll make sure I put that back together perfectly, completely, the way it's supposed to be. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but... You can see... It seems pretty clear to me that they've been arcing. But, if you look at this corner right here... See how it's kind of rounded? That tells me... That this part is up on the edge of the groove. And the rest of it is probably where it's been arcing. But as far as the actual length, they don't look like they've worn down that much, so I'm happy about that. And I'm not worried about the placement, putting them back in. I should say the commutator is going to be a different shape by the time I'm finished with it anyway. So that's kind of good news, there's more brush left than I thought there was going to be. <laughs> I thought they were going to be ground down to pretty much nothing. So I'm happy about that. Here's what I don't understand. It's got oil on it around the outside. And around the outside is in these grooves here. And there's no oil inside those grooves. Huh? <laughs> I don't get it. And even a little bit on the inside here. Uh, and that's after I've cleaned it. So it's not left over from the last time I had it apart. Oh yeah. Are you serious?
the only thing I can think of is that maybe there was oil left inside the coil that I couldn't clean out. There's only a couple spots on here where it's coming, where it's there. And it's only pretty much right in the center on that, so maybe it's just left over. But there's a good look at the commutator. I don't know how well you can see how deep that groove is. And it looks like the brush is along here. So. It's hitting right there. So if I line up that groove, it's this way. And that tells me Where is it on this actually it looks like it's on this side. So the brush is hitting like that. Which tells me it's not making full contact. And chances are it is definitely arcing. And this is dirtied up again. And that was clean. So what I need to do now is make this flat, grind it down. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm not liking the idea of doing that, but got to be done. And there's actually quite a bit of clearance there for what I plan to do. So, let's get my drill lathe set up.